Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Netflix stock. <clears throat> this is going to be a little bit different video than just a valuation video, although I will share my buy price um, for Netflix with everybody. It's really going to be a case study about sticking to your particular investing strategy having your own strategy that's not using the same metrics as the market, kind of thinking for yourself and knowing what it is you're looking for rather than you know, watching CNBC or paying attention to what short-term Wall Street traders are trying to do. Um, I bought Netflix twice in the recent past. So I'm going to review those because I use two different strategies for Netflix. So Netflix has been one of the best returning, I wish I had bought it a long time ago. It's been one of the best returning stocks, maybe the best returning stock other than, um, I don't know if they're better than Nvidia at this point, but if you just go back like 20 years ago, has a 13,000% return, even probably the past, what's that, eight years, 9,000 percent return so um it's hard to do too much better than that really unfortunately i didn't buy netflix back then i bought it uh, more recently during this 2022 decline so within the past couple years so i have two different investing strategies and i bought netflix using two distinct strategies the first one of those is a strategy for fast growth businesses. Now, Netflix is one of the bigger fast growth businesses. Usually this strategy, I shouldn't say usually, but often this strategy is focused more on smaller businesses that can grow very big, like Netflix 20 years ago rather than Netflix two years ago. But there is a category of stocks that can be bigger companies that can still grow a lot. And we've seen that especially with the Magnificent Seven, and they're gigantic at this point. I'm not sure if Net what is Netflix. So, I mean, compared to those guys, Netflix is in, is pretty small still, three hundred billion dollars. It's not three trillion dollars like Apple or something, but it's also not three hundred million dollar market cap like some of these are. So, this is on the bigger end of my growth strategy. <clears throat> now. My growth strategy, some of the metrics are only in the Full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha. Uh, those links will be in the description. If you join one of the paid Patreon tiers, you can get a big discount to the full service. So check those out if you're, if you're interested in that. I also have a weekly um, pick service on Patreon for $25 a month where I just find the best relative value each week and share it even if it's not at my buy price so far most of them have been have been but if everything's full and there's nothing to buy then i just find the next best thing so it's a little different than the full cyclical investors club service where i'm looking for really cheap deals like i'm going to talk about here with the two times i bought netflix so the specific metrics of this are exclusive to to the to the full cyclical investors club service but the basic one that i share on on youtube that is earnings based is basically you want uh, like a 30-ish PE, 30 to 33 PE, and you can assume 20% earnings growth. <clears throat> and if you can if you can get that within like two years or so, then that's usually like a decent a uh, place to buy it if you're if you're just using an earnings based based metric. So there aren't too many stocks. I made a video on Mercado Libre about this. If you want to go search for that one and check that one out, um, I get more into the details. But that's this initial strategy I bought Netflix with right about here in um, March 2022. I think it was March 29th. I'll look it up here in a second to make sure. And one of the, and you can see it has about a 33 PE. I think earnings were expected to still rise at that point. They hadn't dipped in 2022 yet. But the growth rate had been really fantastic, like far over 20%, right, leading up to that. So the metrics looked good. And this particular strategy, the goal is to hold long term. It's a buy and hold strategy. Most growth strategies, um, strangely, are not buy and hold strategies. Usually traders are the ones trading 
faster growth businesses because the stocks tend to be more volatile and can also have more upside. At least that's my theory. And they also tend to be younger, newer, less experienced investors that are looking to make kind of more quick money than a long-term investment. But actually, it's not like the Walmart-style dividend payers of the world that should be bought and hold because those businesses are usually don't have much growth and can be subject to decline. Whereas a long-term growth business that's growing earnings at 20% or 15% a year for quite a while, those are the ones you really want to hold. You want to buy Amazon early and hold it long-term. You want to buy Google early and hold it long-term. And so when I bought Netflix using my growth strategy, it was buy and hold strategy. And one of the reasons it is is because when earnings are growing a lot at rates like 85% or even this year at 65%, it's very hard to do a good valuation analysis because it's kind of the opposite of a cyclical business where earnings can go up and down a lot. Um, it's just that earnings can outperform so much that they can really outperform soon after maybe they looked overvalued. So they'll look overvalued if you assume earnings are going to grow 20% a year, like I usually do with these. But then when they grow 65% a year, well, all of a sudden that they don't look over if they were priced right, they don't look overvalued all of a sudden. And so that's another reason this strategy is buy and hold. So I I bought it. Using that strategy, um, let's see. So I bought this one. It wasn't in March. It was, oh no, this is my second purchase. So that first one was in March because I still hold that one. So let's go back. That was my second purchase. We'll get to that one in a second. So this is the one I'm still holding. Bought it on the 29th, which is right here. So it's up almost 100%. I think I'm in the like upper 90s in, when I, on my tracking. So. It's up about 100% this year, or since I bought it, but initially it fell 60% in literally like two months. It was crazy. This says 52. It was actually more like 60, and immediately it fell that deeply. But this is a buy and hold strategy. I'm not freaking out. I'm just holding it through it. I have other stocks I bought at this time that remain down, and I still hold them. Um but Netflix is one of the ones that came back strong. Now, that, that May 6th purchase that you saw on my spreadsheet briefly, this I used kind of the normal value, earnings valuation that you see me use here on the channel a lot. And really all I do is I take the earnings and the earnings growth estimate and I extrapolate that out 10 years and I see what sort of kegger I'm likely to get using those assumptions. Now for this at the time, actually I'm still using a 15% earnings growth rate is what I assumed for Netflix. Now at the time, earnings were falling. So Wall Street's looking at two things. One is earnings, the direction is falling. So it's no longer growing at 85% and a 66 PE ratio. Now earnings are going the wrong direction so they can't support that 66 PE ratio and that will send the stock price down. The other reason the stock price went down so quickly is because uh, Wall Street was measuring, valuing Netflix based on their sub, on their sub growth, on their subscription member growth. And I never did that because I didn't think it was the best metric to use. I used earnings, which is what I cared about. And so if you looked at earnings and you just use a little, and you can see that they had this COVID bump but the trajectory, you could kind of traject her out and say, okay, yeah, they're falling after that, but it's not going to zero, right? They'll probably bottom at some point and start to grow again. And literally all I did was ask myself, what's a reasonable growth rate I think they can grow long-term? 15% was what I came up with. I put that in as my estimate. I ignored all the stuff about subs and members and all that stuff. And... I assumed maybe they could find a way to monetize ads and things like that, which seemed not particularly hard for them to do. And so I bought the stock down here at the bottom on May 6th, which is right about here. So this was a valuation-based metric using, again, a separate strategy from my initial purchase 
using my own metrics for my strategy and not what Wall Street was thinking and really just very basic assumptions that were not super hard to make. Now, it's also always a little bit scary when a stock falls. I don't know what it fell off its peak. I mean, it fell 70 more than it probably fell 80 percent off its peak. So it's always a little bit scary when something like that happens and you think, well, maybe people know something I don't. But if you really understand your strategies and you're not making a gigantic bet, you know, you're not betting your whole life savings on one investment, you can come in and buy at the bottom. So, but what happened was Netflix stock price since then. So I bought it on May 6, 2022, sold 13 months later, basically for 121% profit. And what happened during that time is the stock price rose so fast. Let's see, we were up here. Yeah, we were right in this range. So the stock price rose so fast, it was all the way up to like a 40 PE again. And it actually got to the point where using the same assumptions that I bought it with, it became expensive enough to sell it based on that 15% earnings growth rate. Now what happened was which was about what they were on track for, honestly, in 2023. What happened was this past year, they grew at 65%, which is you know four times higher than I extra had extrapolated out. Now, maybe this will be choppy at some point, and it'll come back down, who knows? But they went on to like completely blow out the estimates that I was using. So I took profits in this position at a, after 120% gain in a year, which is great, but the stock price is now you know probably double, double that still. But I didn't have any way to do that. Know that using my strategy, I'm just using using it the way that, it, that it's meant to be. Now the other strategy is buy and hold. So I just kept. I still hold that position. I still have that initial position in Netflix. It's up almost 100. percent But I still haven't made as much money as I made in a year uh, buying when it was cheap. So a lot of times, the main thing here is just know your strategy. Don't let Wall Street and the news and everything dictate um what you're doing you know the strategy you want to use know if you do it enough you'll have a good sense in how often it's right usually mine is about 80 percent of the time usually i only lose money about 20 percent of the time um so usually 80 percent of the time i at least get positive returns but the other thing that's worth noting here is you know often people will say well my buy prices are too low and they'll never happen but we see even with a stock like Netflix, which everybody knows, um, everybody's following, it still got down to, a. it was like at a 15 PE basically when I bought it. So, which is a reasonable price to pay, but it did get down there. And if it would have had a slower recovery and it wouldn't have shot up 120% in a year, uh, I probably would still have this position too, but it, it just, I didn't think they were gonna grow earnings at 65%. Um, so just some things to think about there with Netflix, knowing your strategy. So let's get into just a quick valuation. It's kind of a bonus here. So this number here is a three year revenue growth. And sometimes this can take a, it's good to look at that to get a baseline, how much that top line growth is growing and it's growing about 10% a year. So even though they had that gigantic, um, earnings growth of 65%, last year or this is that this year maybe it's this year let me look at it again really quick that's this year expected to be this year so even with that the actual earning the revenue growth wasn't that high so it's probably not going to be sustained that earnings growth level is probably not going to be sustainable um and it will come down to some normal level this has only been about 10 percent that the top line's been growing so they probably cut costs or had some sort you know i i haven't looked at the in deep level accounting there that they're doing but so that makes you think uh, because you might think well maybe i should raise my earnings growth estimate growth up to like 20 percent, which is the maximum so looking at that revenue can give you an idea the revenue growth this is three years combined that can make you think well maybe not maybe 15 is you know more reasonable so i'm still at the same 15 percent assumption but now instead of an eight percent 10 year um, earnings kager, which is how much earnings you could collect as a business owner, assuming 15% earnings growth over 10 years, instead of 8%, we're at 4.7. 5% is usually five-year kager, uh, sorry, 5% five 
kegger for 10 years is usually the level, if it gets below that, I think about selling. Like if you think about, I don't know, uh, short-term bonds are, are higher than this right now. So, and even long-term are close to this. So it's not likely to be a great return unless they just continue to blow out those earnings. But the revenue growth is saying that they they probably won't do that long-term, right? Like not 65%, these 65% growth years. So it still technically would be like, consider selling it territory on an earnings basis if you think that 15% growth is reasonable. Um, but that produces a buy price. This, If the price goes down, this number goes up. So if the price falls, in order for this to get to 8%, it needs to fall to $380 a share. It's about 50% lower than where it is now, which is 750 five dollars a share we'll call it so this gives you an idea that the valuation is quite high now if you think 15 percent earnings growth is kind of the long term a good long term rate and each person has to kind of decide that for themselves especially with a stock like this analysts are looking for 20 percent so if you put 20 percent in there it's probably going to be about the same as the market and that well let's just go look at it actually so the s p 500 if i pick the right spreadsheet to look at here usually this s p 500 number is about 5.2 percent to 5.3 percent right now so if i put the 20 percent the market thinks they're going to do in here for growth we're a little bit closer to six percent so but still in that kind of five to six percent kega range so probably the market doesn't really think they're going to do 20 they're probably thinking high teens or something like that we might guess just based on what everything else is priced in the market um so just a couple lessons i'm going to maybe put this one in my investing lessons playlist for investors to think about to if you're using the same metrics that the market's using Unless it's a situation where you buy a long-term growth company that the market's always bullish on, you know, like Google or Apple or something. Um, if it's if it's any other type of situation, if you're using all the same metrics the short-term traders in the market are using and the news is telling you are important, you're probably not going to get good return. I mean, not going to get above average returns. You're going to get returns similar to the market. But if you're willing to have your own and think for yourself and have some confidence in the strategies that you're using. Now, these two strategies I used were far off. They're very different approaches. They both returned about 100% so far. Um, one of them has already been profited from, but which that money can be reinvested. So it's not just the end of the world when you take profits. Uh, you know, if you have to pay tax, you pay your 20% tax. So you're left with 100% um, return. So you double your money in a year. And you can pay, you can go out and invest that money in other opportunities that maybe could also do well over the past year and a half or so. So it's not as though that's the only return that you get from taking your profits. Whereas this other one can keep going on, however, you know, maybe it keeps compounding at 15% from here. Well, it already doubled. So that's going to be a really good returns over the long run as long as Netflix can keep growing it. Even if they only grew at like 10% for he, from here, that should be a pretty good um, long-term return. So I'll just hold that one forever, basically, until something bad, until that revenue number I showed you goes negative or something. It looks like they're declining. All right. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, hit the subscribe button and the like button. Check out Patreon. I have a free tier there, too, where I'll post this, and I post all the YouTube videos over there, so... People don't have to rely on the YouTube algorithm. Um, they can just see everything that's over there. And then it, maybe you get interested in one of the other Patreon tiers if you think all this stuff makes some sense. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see everybody later. Bye.